Hey girl, you're listening to the Bright Life Podcast, all about ways to stay inspired, chase your dreams, and find more gratitude in the highs and lows of the journey. I'm your host, Jessica Johnson. I run a content marketing agency and travel the world as a digital nomad, just a suitcase, my hubby, and a trusty laptop in tow. I'm a self-growth junkie, a believer in other big-hearted women, and I'm all about sharing tips, tricks, lessons learned, and encouragement so we can all live our biggest, brightest lives. You ready? Let's do this. Hi, everyone. I am so excited to share my friend with you today. We have on Diana Nguyen, who is the CEO and founder of Madison Seville, a lifestyle brand of women's blazers and suits launching next month. She left the corporate finance and tech world almost three years ago to take on the challenge of reinventing a women's blazer. After gathering feedback and pain points and after hundreds of iterations, fittings, and fabric swatches later, she created a timeless jacket with a bespoke look and feel and so comfortable that you can sleep in them. She created Madison Seville as more than just a fashion brand. Her purpose and intention for Madison Seville is to inspire women by armoring them from the outside and building them up from the inside. Madison Seville is a lifestyle brand with a purpose to inspire, to help each woman realize her own gift, and to let her light shine. Welcome, Diana. Hello. I am so excited to be here, and I am very honored that you have me as a guest on your podcast. I am so excited to have you here as well. And so maybe the, the best way, we have a little background, but maybe the best way for everyone to get introduced to you is to just start off and tell us a little bit more about, you know, who you are, what got you to where you are on your entrepreneurial journey and, you know, where you're at now. Oh, absolutely. How many hours do you have? No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Let's see. Um, Well, actually in about 15 years, I've been in finance, well, accounting um, tech uh, for the last 15 years. And so my major, I graduated from the University of Washington and I majored in accounting and minored in marketing. And so I actually ended up going into um, the big four right after college. So I worked at Deloitte and then um, I ended up at uh, Real Networks and Microsoft. And Microsoft was my last company before I made this big jump into the yeah. entrepreneurial world. And um, to be honest, it's just the last 15 years, it was just, and I, I'm sure you understand, and those folks out there um, would understand what I'm saying is like, you're doing you're doing this that you went to school for and you're experienced in and you're good at it because you're experienced in it. But there's still like this gnawing feeling of just like something's missing or I want to do more. There's Mm -hmm. something more out there. And so the older I got, the more like loud that voice got inside. And so I was just so for a, a moment, for a few years, I just didn't know what to, I knew what I like and I knew what I didn't like, but I just didn't know what that meant. And um, what I did, and I think it is a great, great idea and that people should really consider if they're in that spot, um, is hiring a career coach. And I hired oh. a career coach when I was at Microsoft um, just to help me sift through all of that. You know, like, you know what you like, you know what you don't like. Um, these are your strengths and your weaknesses, but what does that mean? Uh, and she really helped me focus in on, you know, I actually had two career coaches coaches and they each had a very different method, but all came to the same conclusion, which is with your strengths, your weaknesses, your personalities, um, your personality, it, you're an entrepreneur. You will be great at being an entrepreneur. (laughs) Um, So that's what started this whole kind of journey. But of course, you're probably wondering like, okay, so entrepreneur, but how did you get to Madison Savile? Mm -hmm. And it wasn't apparent in the beginning. And, you know, I just want to make this known to everybody too, that it is a process and it evolves. It's not like, oh, here, one day you wake up with an idea, which you totally could, you know, there's lots of entrepreneurs and startups are kind of started like that with an idea you wake up with one morning. But mine was more of like trying to, you know, uncover that seed that's been planted inside you. (laughs) Right. 
<laughs> yeah. Um, and so I always say my my the words I always say is the inconveniences of today are the innovations for tomorrow. And mm, I so that. I live being in the corporate world for like the last 15 years, I love a good blazer. And I a lot of women in my network, they love blazers as well, but we always have the same problem where you're either spending thousands and thousands of dollars on it or you can't find anything that actually fits well. And most of the time I can't wait to like take off a blazer that I have because it's just, I feel like I'm in a straight jacket is my experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm a huge fan of James Bond, um, GQ, all of that. Yeah. <laughs> Aren't we all? <laughs> yep. Yep. And I'm like, you know, I would really want us to have the same thing, you know, just to really have a good, uh, suit, that's what it started with in the beginning was just thinking about suits, you know, just to really look good in a suit, um, fitted, styled, tailored. Um, but I just couldn't find any. And so I then took on this kind of mission of like, okay, I am going to go down this path and understand why this is such a problem. And it's definitely now I understand after so many years of um, looking and refitting and redesigning a blazer of why it's such a huge problem because mm -hmm. you know for for men it's easy because it's you know they don't have all the different shapes and sizes right that yeah, a woman true. would have to think about and and fit and so us women are all different shapes and sizes and it's hard to fit that um so it was definitely a challenge and so I went down that path um and then you know it just evolved after that into being more than just a fashion brand because I knew that I wanted to be just more than a fashion brand because of my purpose and my passion um, is behind community and behind inspiring women and helping others. Um, because in my corporate life, I always did community service or um, doing any the extracurricular at work. So I always led the culture and climate team or helped led, you know, the organization and community service because I wanted to do more. There was, that was always inside of me of impacting and wanting to do more. And I wanted this company to be that too, um, which is why we have Madison Savile today. Yes, I love that. I mean, there's so many parts in there that I think are so spot on, you know, one, just that there's, you knew that there was that entrepreneurial spirit in you, but it took a little while to find what that idea was. Yes. Um, and I remember Sarah Blakely once listening to her masterclass, you know, the founder of Spanx and her saying that as well, that she just always knew that she wanted to do something, but was on the hunt for that idea. And so just the being open to it and how interesting it is that you really found your way to something that even if it's a, a product, right, it really can be much more than that and can kind of merge that impact and purpose that you have behind it. So I think it's just such an interesting way that you kind of have, have woven them all together and been open to where that journey leads you and been open to finding a way to really make it align with all the best of your interests and passions. Yeah. It, it's a, like you said, it's a process. And by the way, I yeah. love Sarah Blakely. I follow yeah, her. I'm reading a, I'm reading a book about her. Um, so yes, I'm like, yes, Sarah Blakely. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And you're both in the, you know, a similar field with the fashion yeah. and design and then everything. And I love too, that like you are so open about the fact that it's been a journey. You know, I think there's so much out there that makes, you know, on social media or wherever that like makes entrepreneurship seem like this really shiny, like always fun path. <laughs> and really you and I have had conversations about this, but I think the truth is it can be harder and longer than is widely talked about. Yeah. And if, if people aren't open about that, I think it can be discouraging or they can feel like they're doing something wrong when really, I think that is actually just the norm and not the exception. And so oh, absolutely. Has the, have you found that that's been true for your experience? Um, and if so, you know, how so? Well, I started laughing when you said that because I'm like, <laughs> it's so true. And yeah. <laughs> honestly, you know, you don't really know until you're in it. And you're like, oh, okay, right. I see what you mean. <laughs> I was 
you know, I was naive in a sense where um, when I left, um, when I was very transparent with uh, my team and my boss, and I was super blessed to have such a supportive boss and a supportive team because the whole way I was telling them, like, you know, it's not long term for me here. I I have this vision and I have a goal. And then when the time is right, I'm going to make the jump. And they supported me the whole way, which is awesome. And they still support me to this day. So really blessed with that. And it got to the point where I'm like, okay, you know, I was working on Madison Savile on the side, you know, at night um, on the weekends until I got to a place where I'm like, I think I'm ready to leave. And then I had this conversation with my boss and then I left. And because the thought was, okay, so I'm ready to leave. And in six months, because I'm getting all this time back that, you know, before I was working this full-time job, that once that is now replaced with, or it gives me that additional time to work on Madison Savile, I can launch this thing in six months. Mm-hmm. Two and a half years later, I'm talking to you right now, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and we're launching next month. This is two and a half oh. years later. <laughs> so exciting. It's finally here. It's but finally yes, here. Yeah. Um, it takes time. Exactly. And I think the thing is, it's you have to understand that it's it's like any job really that you start. It's, uh, you have that learning curve with any new job that you start, you have that learning curve and that ramp up time because you know what you don't know and Mm -hmm. until you're in it. And so you're learning all these things and it takes time. And in the entrepreneur world, it's 10 times longer because you're in charge of everything of the business. And it's truly like a master class uh, or your master's in business is jumping into this startup entrepreneur life because you don't know what you don't know until you actually go through it. And then when you look back and you reflect on the last how many years you, you've been in it, you've learned a lot, but it takes time. And um, it is definitely true that, you know, when I left, I thought it was going to be six months. But, you know, what I learned is because I went from finance to fashion it's two very different industries. And so at the same time, I'm learning um, along the way and that takes time and it's different. And like I was saying, with the fittings and whatnot, it's just iteration after iteration. And if, you know, the, the, one of the pillars of Madison Savile is we're focused on reinventing and perfecting the fit of a woman's blazer. And that takes time. It's not just going to happen overnight. And that's what people don't know, because a lot of the times we talked about this before um, in in my podcast yeah. is that, you know, we we don't know until we're in it. And it just it it takes longer than you think. And it things that you hear about from successful entrepreneurs and businesses is not until they're successful, but you didn't know that they spent five years, 10 years, 20 years building this thing up. Right. Yeah. I think that's so powerful because even if it can sound a little bit overwhelming, if you're like on the outset of starting this entrepreneurial journey, you're like, wait, what? No, I'm going to have the six months thing. I think it really, once you're in it helps to just realize like, this is something that the vast majority go through, it's really the rare person that ever figures it out on that first try. Because like you say, there's a learning curve for every single job that you're doing and you're doing all the jobs when you're beginning your entrepreneurship. (laughs) And you are kind of, you know, you have your own mindset and personal you know, stuff and everything kind of comes to the front where you're just continually not only working through like the business, like nuts and bolts of running a business, but then also what are your, you know, blocks around things too, that you're just constantly pushing your own limits and coming up against them and then getting to the next level kind of a thing that absolutely takes some good things take time. (laughs) Yeah. And I'm glad you said that because the other thing is that good things take time. And just like we say, don't compare yourself to others. Um, Mm -hmm. Because I, you know, when we hear stories about entrepreneurs or we hear inspiration, motivational stories, it, we always hear like we, you know, that entrepreneur spent X amount of time, right? Like I spent a hundred hour weeks, you know, to get this company up and started. It took me three months to get funding or whatever. And then 
in the meantime, you're like, I feel so behind because I only have X amount of time to spend on my business because your situations are all different. You know, whether you have a family, you're still working a full time job or, you know, personal situations happen. You can't compare yourself to others where you're like, I'm not putting enough hours. I'm not doing enough. I think when you remind yourself that you you are doing your best in the situation that you're in because everybody's situation is different and you're making progress forward, that's what matters. Right. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's a great point. And kind of speaking to that, you know, have you found ways or how do you keep motivation and, you know, keep proud of yourself, keep moving forward when you're in that building stage versus the everything has worked out like celebration, you know, <laughs> launch party is kind of stage. That's a great question because I'm constantly working on it and I'm still working on it as, as always, you know, in the beginning stages, especially before a launch. Um, what I keep uh, reminding myself is, and, and my friends also remind myself, me is mm -hmm. resting. So resting, mm -hmm. so it's the things that keep me motivated, resting your will and your why. And what I mean by that is when you're in this, you're going to get burnt out. You're going to get tired because like you said, you're doing all these different roles in a business to get your uh, startup, to get your business going. And, and then you're so in the weeds too, you can get lost um, in the weeds and you can lose your vision. And so resting can help you reset and refresh because it gives you that time for your, your mind and body to relax and clear your head. Um, and I know some people are like, well, you know, it, I don't have time, you know, I don't have time to rest. I don't have time to do that. There's so many things I have to do, but if you were to just take a break for maybe a day even, you know, or a couple hours, take a walk, whatever it is, you'll be in a much better spot than if you were to just keep pushing through. Right. So resting um, and then your will, you know, your will will get you back up and your why will pull you forward is what I say. Mm -hmm. So your will, you know, when, when those times when something didn't work out yet again, right? Or you've just uh, encountered another obstacle. It is your will to, you know, bring this idea to life, your will to make your dreams come true, that will get you back up. And then your why is, why are you doing this? And what is the purpose behind what you're doing? And that reminder will constantly keep pulling you forward. I love that. Your rest, your will, and your why. And I couldn't agree more. I think that there's so much out there that's like hustle culture, you know, keep yeah. going, don't sleep for 10 years. <laughs> like if you want it bad <laughs> enough, like, but I, I have 100% agree. And I think it's a new approach that I'm hearing people talk about more, but I think that that, that rest is when you give yourself the chance to have the white space for the ideas. You know, it's why we always get our best ideas driving or like exactly. in the shower or walk, going on a walk <laughs> yep. or whatever. It's like, you wouldn't believe how much that kind of opens up in your own brain and, and just kind of rejuvenates you. Like it just, I think that's what really kind of gives you almost that clarity around your will and your why. It's like you, you have to kind of do the dance, you know, it gives you your flow back. I think if you give yourself that rest and then keep going versus just pushing until it's not even, you know, fun anymore kind of thing. Yeah. And it's a, it's a practice because as you know, like when you're in it, you're like, I have so many things to do and you just keep pushing. And it's that, um, like exercise when you're, when you get to this point, like resting, you have to force it. <laughs> Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> and people will know what we mean when they get there, but it's like, what do you mean? Resting should be easy. It's like, well, when you're kind of in it and you have 5 million things to do, it's kind of yeah. hard sometimes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just prioritizing that. And then it almost gives you more energy for the rest of it. You know, it's exactly. funny, it's counterintuitive, but it's totally true. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. And the, and the why is important too. I think that's a big thing that I've learned for 
you know, anytime I feel like that motivation is lacking or I'm just not sure um, where to go or what's missing, I think returning to that and just kind of refocusing on it, like what is the overarching vision here? What is the why? And making sure that like, that you stay connected to that, I think can see you through a lot of the ups and downs and bumps in the road. Right. Absolutely. And, you know, another thing is with the why is sometimes, like I was saying, you're too in the weeds or maybe you've gone uh, down a different road and you didn't realize because you're so in the weeds. And then when you actually think about your why, it realigns you with your path. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Totally. And it can, the great thing about that too, is it can evolve with you, you know? And I think that's even part of your brand is like that evolution and continually searching for what's better. And just that why can move with you. And it's something that maybe is like the foundation, but then as you change and as you evolve and grow, that can too. It's almost just the centering force and that allows you to kind of, you know, play and grow with it as, as you do. Exactly. Yes. That's a great way of putting it. Your why will evolve and it will grow with you um, Mm -hmm. because it just starts like a seed and then it will grow into something, you know, when you reflect back bigger than you would imagine. Um, And that is because uh, a lot of times too, with investors, they will ask you what your why is. And if you're, if you say your why is money, <laughs> they're, they're less likely to invest in you because they know that if it's about money only, then when something happens, like what happened last year, right? With, with COVID and then like the dip in the economy and all this stuff, then that doesn't pull you forward because businesses will go through ups and downs, but if you have your why, if your why is solid and you have that purpose, it will pull you through those challenging times. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, speaking of 2020, <laughs> I mean, as, as much as we probably don't, you know, want to go back to that too soon. Um, but the fact is, it was an interesting year for entrepreneurs and businesses, like no doubt, you know, it through some major curveballs, especially I can imagine you're thinking, okay, I'm going into like fashion and then all of a sudden, and especially like work, right? Like business attire in some senses, and then offices shut down everywhere. (laughs) And that's probably just one of the curveballs of last year. So, you know, how do you navigate that when you are throwing those curveballs? And what was your experience, you know, with that last year, what were the lessons in that? I think I like I think I was breathing through a paper bag (laughs) (laughs) because you're right. It was, you know, it's already taken longer than I I, I thought. Right. We were talking about when you first make that jump, you thought it was going to be, you know, sooner than later. But it takes time. And that's a process. What I have to say is what I've learned is trust in the process, trust in the timing and then trust in yourself. And Mm -hmm. what I mean by that is that obstacles may be there to prevent you from going down the wrong path or if it's not the right time and then you're learning and growing at the same time so the reason why I say that is because 2020 was a huge lesson for me in that where we've spent all these years you know perfecting the blazer and now we got it and now we have the sample because it took time to find the right the right factory the right ateliers the right fabric and then everything's coming together and we're about to do the photo shoot and we're shut down oh my goodness <laughs> so you're like building up you know you're ready to go. you're like oh my gosh we're getting so close and then everything shuts down and it was just at that time it was just so devastating and and these things, these curveballs will actually, you know, turn into something else that you wouldn't even imagine or think of. Like my mm-hmm. my own podcast, the Madison Savile Inspired Podcast, came out Which of is this. Amazing. Thank yeah. you. Mm-hmm. Thank you. It came out of this because I couldn't do anything. We couldn't do the photo shoot. We couldn't launch without images, right? Of the product, all of that. And then you why would you I mean this was way longer. This has taken way longer than a lot of us would ever expect. And so at that time in my head in March, um, last March, I was thinking, oh yeah, we're going to launch or it's just going to be 
for a couple months, right? We're just going to be in lockdown for a couple months and things will be right. better by summer. And it just didn't happen. It just kept going and going and going. If I reflect back, launching a Blazers line in that year would not have been good, especially for a startup because all the the funding and the things that you've put into it. So there's, you know, hindsight and reflection, learning that piece. And then too, like I was saying, things come out of it that you wouldn't expect or think of. Like I said, the, the podcast, because at one point my husband said to me, well, maybe the last few years you've been spending on the outside of Madison Savile, the Blazers, and your purpose and passion is to build women up and inspire them. And maybe this is an opportunity and time that has been given to you to um, do something and focus on the inside of what Madison mm-hmm. Savile is about. And that's how the podcast came about. I'm like, wow. you know, <laughs> that's yeah. a really great um, great advice or just kind of, um, inspiration into, let me think about what I can do if I can't, you know, focus on the outside and bring that, um, it's time for me to focus on the inside. And that's how the podcast came about. And so great things come from, you know, obstacles. And, and I really believe like, you know, if there are obstacles in your way, it is to either prevent you from going down the wrong path, or it's just not the right timing. And you just have to learn to trust in the process, trust in the timing and trust in yourself. And with Madison Savile, you're right, Jessica, because at one point I was like, freaking out, of course, you know, Mm -hmm. if I'm launching a blazers and suits line, and this is happening, what's going to happen with the fashion industry? What's going to happen with blazers and suits? And, but you know, honestly, we're not going to be in sweats every day in the future. Um, once right. you know, One day. we're going to go <laughs> back to <laughs> yeah, the normal economy, things are going to pick up again. Um, and I know for me, as well as many others, we're just dying to get dressed up again and to go out and to mm-hmm. see people. And Madison Savile is about perfecting the blazer and the fit and the versatility of the blazer and a good one like one of our our styles is a boyfriend jacket and that's one of the most versatile blazers that you can wear you can wear it over your t-shirt and yoga pants and just jump on a zoom call right and I call it because we've spent so much time perfecting the fit it feels like you're wearing pajamas so it's like your new business robe (laughs) yes I love that. It's like the perfect, I don't know, just every, like, it's what every woman talks about wanting, right? Like it's comfortable. It's something that you can wear in multiple situations. It can do probably office or casual. Is that right? Like it sounds. Absolutely. Yes. It is, you know, our blazers we've designed because right now we're, like I said, we're about to launch and, you know, we're developing the website and writing the descriptions for the blazers. And I'm like, eh, sitting down and writing looking at what you've created and you write out the description, you're like, wow, you know, there's a lot more in you're like five pockets, you know, in a blazer, mm-hmm. one for your lip gloss. It, I just, yes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Mm-hmm. I, I just think that, you know, these blazers are just so versatile and no, and it's also that knowing inside where a lot of people can say like, because this question has been presented to me of like, well, this changes kind of the landscape of business attire and, you know, working remotely and this and that. And I'm like, yeah, but it still doesn't change the fact that, you know, these blazers are so comfortable, so versatile and stylish and functional at the same time. My job is to be able to, you know, uh, communicate and share that with the world and then hopefully get it into the hands of many women so they can see it for themselves um Mm -hmm. and and share that vision and then that will evolve so it's that knowing too inside where you know people will come to you and say these things and you know they'll present their own fears or concerns but if you know deep down inside like you know like you have to one of the things about being an entrepreneur is you have to stick to your values you have to stick to your vision and what you believe in and who you are and Mm -hmm you will encounter these moments where people will question or, or even like family members and whatnot, just overall, I'm not just saying this, but just overall where 
you know, they might be projecting their own fears um, or their own insecurities and doubts onto you. And so you have to stand true to yourself and what you believe in and what you're doing to to defend your your own, you know, to stand in your own and what you're doing. Yes, it's so true. That's something that I've definitely learned on my journey as well is just whatever others are saying is so often not about you. It's right. more that everyone has their own doubts, their own fears, you know, some well-meaning people are trying to protect you yeah. um, or they're just reflecting back like their own thoughts inside. Like there's so much of that, that you, you know, just get used to navigating. And what I always think too, is like, if someone says something like that, I kind of look for where's the part in me that has that? Because sometimes I feel like it's just that opportunity almost presented to you to where can I heal that own thought in me or where can I strengthen my own belief that that doesn't even get to me anymore? You know, right. like I'm just always looking for that. And and also what you said, I think is so spot on about the detours. Like you can't even see sometimes where those are leading you that you never would have ended up Um, and I know for me, like I had, you know, we've talked about it on your podcast as well, but just those experiences, especially early on in business, um, where, you know, it took longer or things were harder, but the growth that came from that, I know people always say this and you're like, oh yeah, great. The growth is so great, (laughs) you know, in the hard times, but I know for a fact, I, you know, it can change and accelerate your success in other ways. Like you, you, when you really are struggling, I think you find mentors you wouldn't otherwise find. You find the books or lessons or teachers or whatever. You find your own resolve. Um, You really, I think, are kind of pushed against your own limits. And that really gets you to a place you wouldn't have without those times that once you can just get through them, you'll look back and be so grateful you had those experiences. Definitely. Again, it's hard to say in the moment, but like just knowing that like there will be a time if you know anyone listening is in that, there will be a time when you're not in this anymore and you cannot even imagine all that you're learning right now and all that you're being strengthened by and and just that you'll, you know, be proud of yourself because you're you're standing through it and you're in it. And one day you will look back and see all the fruits of that and just be, you know, glad for these times most likely that it was worth it. Absolutely. And there are times when, again, it's okay to rest. It's okay where, yeah. you know, there are going to be days where you're just tired and or you just encountered an obstacle because there are will always be challenges and obstacles in anything that you do. And you're just like, I just don't want to do anything today. And that's okay. And, Mm -hmm. and I feel like there's a lot of times, a lot of pressure that we um, put on ourselves. And, you know, especially with as an entrepreneur, you know, the doubts and the thoughts Mm -hmm. and the things that go through your head and that's on repeat, it, it, adds a lot of pressure and you're doing so many roles and so many things and you're learning at the same time um I think a lot of people put a lot of pressure on themselves to get certain things done um or you know like you said is like uh, what we talked about earlier is like uh I'm gonna launch in two months but then you're learning along the way all these things that you didn't even think about right Mm -hmm. and it's being open to that and going with the flow of things and, and, and learning and growing and being patient with yourself. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You use the word doubts. How do you overcome those doubts as an entrepreneur? What's worked for you? Um, knowing your why is definitely yeah. the number one thing. And I think it's the knowing your why and your purpose. It, mm-hmm. it, it's thinking of, let's think of it like this. If, you don't do this, the I, the idea will die with you. If there is mm-hmm. a will, there's a way. There's no one like you. So if not you, then who? Because yeah. you can have so many, you know, there's a lot of competition out there. There's a lot of different brands. And I've encountered this so many times too, where, you know, there's other women's blazers and suits brands out there. And I would get, I would come across them. And especially with, you know, all the, 
social media analytics. Like once you start looking at a blazer, they keep sending you all these advertisements. <laughs> and you're reminded all the time about all your yeah. competitors. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my gosh, there's so many brands out there. But what keeps me going is knowing my why. And there's nobody like me to bring this idea to life and the way that I'm going to do it that's going to be yes. different from the other brands. So just knowing that and reminding yourself, if I don't go through with this, will I regret this? Yeah, that's a big one. And it's so, so true. I think that no matter what field you're getting into, you can have that thought of, oh, there's a million people already doing this, or, you know, who am I to step into this? But the truth is, no one will execute it the way you will. You know, like like yeah. what you said, there's no one that's going to do it the way that you will. So even if there's a million other people out there, like, like my husband is an entrepreneur as well. And he always says, you know, he'll throw ideas out there for people of businesses that he's thought of, but doesn't really want to take, you know, to fruition. Yeah. And at first when I met him, I thought that was so interesting because I was just like, well, you don't want to give away that idea. And he's like, honestly, even if 10 people did this idea, they would all come out with a different, different. product. <laughs> yep. Or it would, yeah, there'd be a different message behind it. And I've really seen that that's the, the case. And even in your experience with the blazers, like there's a million blazers out there, but like you say, there's also a lot of challenges women have with them that who else is tackling them the way that you are, you know, you need to bring that to you, to the market. And so I think that's really the case for anyone listening as well. Whatever you think of doing You'll add your own voice, your own personality, like you'll think of things and ways to do it that no one else would. And, and different people will listen yeah. to different teachers, you know, right. or different types of leaders um, where there's this other story, you know, Marie Forleo, I know we've yeah. both talked about yeah. listening to and stuff, especially in starting businesses. And I think it was her who said, you know, once her husband had told her, you know, you should really have like more green smoothies or something. And she was <laughs> like, no, I'm going to keep eating my mac and cheese. Thank you. I'm not on that health train. <laughs> and then she became friends with this woman who, you know, was all about really healthy food and plant-based everything. And she found herself going home to her husband saying, man, I love this like smoothie. I'm feeling so good <laughs> off of this. And he's like, uh, yeah, the one I told you three years ago would make you feel really good. And, but I think that's so true. I always remember that when other people, they, it doesn't seem like they'll hear, you know, what I'm saying or what someone else is saying. And I just remember that like, everyone will connect with a different brand, a different, you know, teacher, mentor, whatever. Exactly. And so just knowing that you are the one person that some audience is going to love and is going to just want to buy everything they put out there and work with them, that not everyone will have that. And so that slot will be missing unless you fill it. I think it's just, you know, really like spot on for what you said. I mean, like think of it like this. Have you ever done the um, wine and painting nights or wine and yeah. painting events? You're all painting the same thing, but everybody's yeah. painting comes out different. Yeah, that's so true. <laughs> that's exactly what it is. <laughs> yeah, and you're yeah, you're literally filling out a formula, and it's still a whole different thing. <laughs> so true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you're adding your own your own style, your own color, your own strokes to the painting. Like everybody is different, and even though you're you're looking at the same thing, what results from that is different because it reflects your personality and who you are and what you're putting into it. So yeah, very, yeah. Um, very similar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. What about what advice would you give to someone who is in that starting stage of building a business um, or even in the messy middle, as we call it? Oh, gosh, there's so many. And then some of it will be kind of a, a recap of what we talked about. But, you know, definitely being patient with yourself because you're learning. Um, so being patient with, with yourself. And then we kind of touched on it a little bit, but really surround yourself with mentors and other like-minded people because yeah. what you're going through, you may feel like you're the only person in the world that's going through this. But then if you surround yourself with other entrepreneurs and mentors that have built businesses and have gone through it, you'll, you'll learn a lot for one from from them as well but then also realize that you're not the only one and it is normal what you're you're feeling and what you're going through and so that really helps as well when you're in the messy middle um 
and anywhere in the entrepreneur process is just surround yourself with mentor, mentors and like-minded people, but also surround yourself with people that truly believe in you and what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, having that positive mindset and those positive people around you really helps you through like they will pick you up when you're like I'm just gonna mm-hmm. stay down here for a little bit yeah <laughs> you know because like we're, those- we're gonna get up <laughs> yep. and they will pull you forward too um they'll remind you uh on those days when you forget of why you're doing this as well and I've learned that, and we talked about this, that, you know, there are skeptics out there and there are people that will project their own, their own failures and fears onto you. And so it's that knowing of yeah. why you're doing what you're doing and that you're on the right path to kind of move forward and, and let those things go. Um, and you don't have to have everything perfect to start. It, I, that That's one of the lessons I've learned because... I so come true. from a finance compliance world where everything you like all oh, your ducks in a row, you need to have it. And then I've learned that I have all these things that I've done ahead of time that didn't necessarily need to be done. Like my mentors would say, get your product, you know, get your product out there. That's what you need to focus on. And it's true. It's like, I was just so used to getting everything perfect and in place before I started something. And sometimes you just don't have to have everything perfect. Just do it. Um, And again, staying true to your values, your core, you know, who you are and your vision. Um, I think at the end of the day, if you know what you've done that day is your best, again, based on whatever situation, whatever, life is throwing at you that's winning because it's progress my favorite quote is don't fear failure fear being in the same place as you were last year yes that's so great that's such a good one to just end on I think and just (laughs) kind of let sink in because it's so it's so true I think that as long as you're out there and you're moving forward And that your best might change day to day too, like you mentioned with the rest and and just giving yourself that grace and permission. I think that will keep you moving forward. And the fact that you're doing this and you're two and a half years here, but you just kept moving forward, like no matter what the obstacles were, and now you have a podcast, you have so much more than you probably even envisioned at the outset. And who knows when we talk in six months or a year, what will have come with your launch and everything. So maybe just finishing, like, tell us more about where we can find you and your business and your podcast. So we can just get more of you. (laughs) Oh yes. Um, social media, Instagram, Facebook, it's at Madison Saville. Um, it's S A V I L E. And then we have our, uh, our website, madisonsavile.com where you can sign up, uh, for the newsletter. And then really that's where you'll get you know, exclusive in the know when we're launching our launch date, which is March, 2021, which is next month. Um, yes. and then, uh, the Madison Savile inspired podcast, you can look that up on the, um, we're on Apple podcasts, iHeartRadio, um, Spotify. And then, Oh, I also have a Facebook group called Madison mm-hmm. Savile and insider. And that is a group that you can be invited in and join because it, essentially it's a group that I'm going to go to regularly, especially as we get closer to launch and after launch about what you're looking for in a blazer. What do you not like? What do you like? What do you want? It's where I get feedback from true customers, from um, loyal customers about what they want to see. And then we work with it's a community. We are working with you to create something that you want and you want to see out there. So yeah. Amazing. That sounds so great. So go sign up for all those things. And thank you so much for being here and for sharing your story and your journey. And just can't wait to see where this, where this leads and the launch and everything next month. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for listening in. If you loved this episode, it would mean so much to me if you share it on Instagram stories and tag me so I can personally thank you for helping get the message out. I am so grateful to be on this journey with you. Until next time, talk to you soon.